Well, uh, there are a couple of answers to that. One is, as a child, I uh, used to clean the bullets out of the brains of cows. My father was a butcher. And so I always thought it was um, kind of interesting to think about what was going on in the cow's brain uh, before the bullet went into his brain and um, uh, it was the end of the cow. So it was just kind of a, an early entry into a philosophical question for a young boy. But then I forgot about the brain for many years after that. And um, I was studying business in college and started taking courses in uh, psychology and took a course with someone who was studying the brain. And that's when I fell in love with the brain through uh, his research. And I decided to abandon everything I'd done up until that point. I was actually in a master's in business at that point. And um, I changed fields and did a PhD in psychology with a specialty in psychobiology and uh, have been studying the brain ever since. Well, I think it's um, important to get involved in research uh, to the extent that you can, not depending on what kind of university or college you're in, the opportunities will differ. Um, but even if you can't work in a lab, there's a lot of research you can do on the web about different scientists and how they approach the brain, different facts about the brain. There are lots of really good websites now. For example, there's one called thebeautifulbrain.com, uh, and um, there's a lot of information there. Um, but in general, if, if it's possible, you should uh, try to work in a lab um, at least uh, for a summer or a uh, longer period of time to get your hands sort of wet uh, studying the brain a little bit because that's how you really come to understand it by actually doing research on it. Because each time you do research you um, discover the things that you don't know and you that paves the way for asking all sorts of other questions. So even the, the simplest summer project on the brain uh, can open your mind to new opportunities and new ways of thinking. I think it's, it's very important that we understand that emotions are triggered in us by external events. For example, we don't will fear on ourselves. Fear is something that the environment uh, imposes on us when dangerous, threatening events occur. So your brain is very plastic, and if, even if you acquire some bad emotional experiences from the environment that causes your brain to react poorly to situations or to be more fearful than you would like to be, you also have the capacity to change your brain in a positive way and overcome that fear and control it. We probably can't easily get rid of fear in terms of removing it so easily, but we can gain control over our fears and that's the, uh, the hopeful message. Mm -hmm. We have emotions are things that we can create for ourselves. I mean, usually they happen to us. The environment imposes emotions on us by the situations we encounter. But at the same time, we can create our environment in such a way as to uh, produce the emotions that, that we want to experience. So we go to a restaurant, we have a good meal, uh, we meet with our friends and enjoy their company. So we have the capacity to control our emotions by setting up the environment in a way that will elicit the emotions we want to experience. So if, if you're having a lot of fear and negative emotions, you should just change your environment a little bit so that you have more opportunity for positive emotions. It's not a, you know, it's not a perfect uh, you know, magic bullet solution, but it certainly can help.